What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate those of you that were hanging out, waiting on the stream to start. I uh, didn't put out a recorded video today because I put out two yesterday. That haul video <clears throat> for the Fragrance by Canada Canada Day. I keep wanting to roll my tongue with Canada. It's weird. So that was a late afternoon video. So I was like, eh, give that a little breathing room. And uh, I figured we'd do a stream today because I have more fragrances that came in. Um, I just didn't want to do a massive, giant, 45-minute long video. But I do have more stuff that I bought from Fragrance Buy that we're going to discuss today. But for those of you watching the replay, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. And uh, start it off right. Sin of the day. This was in last night's haul video. Lodissi Pour Homme Vetiver. Great first impressions, even better wearing experience. This is a banger. This is so good. I only I have five sprays on around the neck. I left my forearms free because I was, you know, I've got five fragrances we're going to be spraying here in a moment for this, but quietly one of the best releases of the year. Quietly. This is great. This is a great, great, great everyday fragrance. I'm impressed by this one. It is so good. This might be my favorite Issy Miyake Lodissi Flanker. This one's really good, guys. It's not complicated. It's not deep and complex. It just works. That's a good way to put it. It just works. Very, very fresh and watery. And the there's a little bit of a smoky, earthy tone to this woodiness. Because clearly a, a Haitian vetiver, I believe, is what it is. It's just so clean and rich. It does smell of a quality, fresh vetiver. This is so good. Impressed by this one. Like quietly one of the best releases of the year. Because, I mean, you guys are in the know because a lot of you are, are who recommend that I get that. Great recommendation. Everybody that told me I should try it, good for you. Great, great recommendation. Spencer, good to see you. Legend EDP. I haven't worn it in a while. Sent my style. I like the name. How are you? Ethan, wearing YEDT. The best version, the original. That's what I'm talking about. Patrick, good to see you wearing 3 a.m. God, I haven't sprayed that in so long. Matt is wearing La Mall. You can't go wrong there. That is a classic. Bought Grassland for cheap. Smells really nice. It's, a, it's actually a really good take on Green Irish Tweed. They did a good job with that. Climatic, good to see you. Sauvage Parfum, my favorite version of Sauvage. Was able to get Reserve Privé from Fragrance Bar. Good for you. Good for you. I, they sold out of a lot of stuff. I went look today. There's a lot of stuff that sold out. Uh, one of the fragrances we're talking about, Mahir Legacy. That's sold out now. It was not sold out last night, last time I was on there. It's sold out now. The Cost Essential, that's another classic that doesn't get any love. Creed, Virgin Island Water. Oof, you smell incredible, sir. How you doing, Savage EDP? Hope everyone's well today. I certainly can't complain. We're early today. Yeah, I took a day off from the gym, and since... I'm not going to be at the gym for a few hours. I was like, yeah, let me go live early today because I knew I wanted to do a live stream today because, like I said, I didn't put out a recorded video. I did that shorts video a little while ago, and I knew I was doing this. I'm going to film the weekly rotation for tomorrow. Um, Money in the Bank's going on right now, uh, live from London on Peacock. Money in the Bank WWE premium live event. I don't want to watch it live. I want to watch the replay. So there's, there's more reasons for why we're doing this right now. I want to be able to skip the couple of matches I could care less about to watch the few things, you know, be able to watch the main things I want later. Blue just arrived. Excited to try it. Excited to hear your thoughts on here. Legacy. We're, we're going to start with that one because the note breakdown is literally the exact same as Sedley. I'm a huge fan and advocate for Sedley, so I've got high hopes. I've heard a bunch of people in the chat tell me that it's great, that it's really good. So we'll see. We'll see. Latafa does pretty good most of the time. Masoni Wave in the gym right now. It's funny that you say Masoni Wave. My bottle is literally still right here. I didn't pick it up from the other day. That's such a great fragrance. Such a great fragrance. Halloween Man X loved this cheapy Gucci Guilty Port Home Eau de Parfum. Haven't tried the Eau de Parfum. Rehab, excellent choice. Savage ADP. What's going on the show? I'm trying for Bacchus this morning. I'm going to try Drunk Saffron by Born to Stand Out as my night out scent. Well, I hope you have a great night out this evening. Explore Ultra Blue at the gym. That's a good That's a good situation for that fragrance. Picked up Electimus Trajan 3, the, the three X's that were there. I need Wulong Chai and 100 Silent Ways. You spent a lot of money, even with the 25% off. You spent a lot of money because those X flankers, 
two of the three were two hundred and thirty to two hundred and fifty dollar range. One of them was under two hundred. Yeah, you spent some money, my man. And then an Electimus fragrance on top of that. We hear legacy. Yeah, it's supposed it's supposed to be a direct copy, not similar to exact same note breakdown. It's supposed to be a direct clone. Midori Greenly clone. Okay. Sandy, good to see you. Wearing Eclat. My, the box is empty right here, but I wore it yesterday. It's on my rotation table. Box is right here. I love that fragrance. That's such a good fragrance. Your view is spot on. Such a great release. It really is. And look, I, I haven't wore the EDP yet. I don't know if it's the richness because it's so much more refined, but the Eclat comes across so much more casual that it's much better for my typical days. So I've been really vibing with it since I started spending time with I've been vibing with the Eclat more in the Eau de Parfum. I have the Intense coming. That's going to be much more situational for me, but I'm, I'm excited to try it because I, I think just the line as a whole. Great, great line. Wearing Star Walker, excellent choice. Always look forward to the hauls. Wulong Cha, sir, you smell really good. Guys, if you don't mind, do me a quick favor, hit that thumbs up. We got a decent little crowd. I figured midday on a Saturday, we might not have the biggest crowd. Now, if I did this three hours from now, probably be a different story, but that's okay. Whoever wants to be here, welcome, happy to have you. And anybody else can always, you know, watch it later on. But Let's go ahead and start with it. It is the biggest box of the group. Whoop. And apparently it's a slide out. I was about to drop the damn thing. Again, the quick hands come into play. Mahir Legacy. This is the silver one. They have a black bottle as well. That's, i got to say it's a gimmicky box. Very gimmicky box. I don't care for all of this. I think it's a bit much. I know I could untie it. I understand. I just want to try to slide it out. So I can leave the bow. Bottle's heavy. Definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet. Has a horse head kind of similar to the Kahila fragrances from Paris Corner. Very hefty bottle, though. Cap clicks pretty good in the place. Let's see what kind of atomizer. I mean, that's a heavy cap. Let's see what kind of atomizer we're working with. Decent. Oh, yeah, that's Sedley. A little spicier than Sedley, though, honestly. Out in the air, at least. That is definitely sadly. Give that a little bit more time. Very much sadly. I get this juicy citrus, a little minty, creamy, green spiciness. This is good. It is good, guys, I have to say. It is clearly sadly. I don't know if I would say 100% the same, but probably 90%. It's really, really close. It's lemon, grapefruit kind of smell, more of a lemon feel, really. Like I said, it has that green spice to it that I just I love about sadly. It's present here, minty and creamy. This is good. Paid 37 bucks. Like I said, it's sold out now, unfortunately. It's a fingerprint magnet. Um, sold out from Fragrance by currently, but that's where all of the I bought all of these from. Whew, yeah, this is good. This is good. This one's gonna warrant a full review for sure. Because I'm gonna be spending time with this one in the next week. I'll I'll probably be doing some test sprays and some wearings and stuff like that. Let's pull up the notes, shall we? Here we go. I'm here. Legacy. High rating. Fresh citrus, green, woody, spicy for sure. Spearmint, lavender, grapefruit, lime, pineapple. Black pepper, frankincense, geranium, juniper berry, rosemary, and broxen, cashmere, and oak moss, tonka bean, vetiver. So very much mint lavender, but it's more of a creamy lavender. Um, definitely get plenty of grapefruit. It almost gives a, it gives a lemon-like smell. I don't really get lime and pineapple. It's like a lemony, grapefruity type of citrus definitely get the pe pepper rosemary combo because it's got that spicy green feel frankincense i don't really get much smokiness here i could i get the point but so i wouldn't call it a very smoky fragrance um that oak moss just adds to this green feel it's a very green fragrance 
that is beautiful. But again, Sedley's beautiful. And this, like I said, this, they did a good job. This is a hell of a clone of Sedley. It is. It's a really good job. It's just a pleasure to smell. It's good for everything. Hyperversal. It's a grown man's casual fragrance. How about that? That's how we'll put it. Because it falls in the category of the blues. But it's a more, not really so much a refined blue, because this, as a blue fragrance, this does dress up pretty well. Sedley always has. But it maintains enough to put it in the blue category to where it's not a serious fragrance, but there's all of these aromatic fougere qualities to it that give, it's kind of like timeless meets modern days, if that makes any sense. Like it has a modern smell to it, a modern style, while still having elements and chords that kind of tie into classic men's perfumery from the 70s, 80s, 90s. I hope that makes sense. That's kind of what's going on here. It's kind of like a, a walk through time for the typical daily wear men's fragrance all the way from a few decades ago to now. Like there's elements of all of it. This is so good. So good. So good. We'll give it a first impressions rating at the end. Let's go ahead and pull back to regular screen. Give the nose a break for a moment. Because there's a lot of synthetics in there, casmaran and Abroxin and stuff like that. I don't want to wear my nose down because that's kind of what was happening with this in the haul video. And yes, I've seen the thousand comments of this is the eau de parfum. I was looking at the eau de toilette. But it makes sense on why I was saying, eh, I get a little bit of Sauvage, but uh, this is too fruity and spicy to be Sauvage. Yeah, there was suede. I didn't really get much iris. I sprayed it again on my arm last night after I showered. Um, I saw people comparing it to Code. You get a little bit of that as it dries in the opening. No, but as it dries for sure. But this kind of smells like uh, if Savage EDP and Givenchy Gentleman EDP had a baby. You get the icon Eau de Parfum. I, that's what I relate it to the most because it does have a little bit of the Savage EDP feel from all that spiciness with the freshness. But I also get kind of the powdery, balmy qualities, a little bit of a leathery feel from um, from Gentleman EDP. Like I said, I, I understand where people are coming from with original Armani code as it dries and you get that sweet Tonka bean going, but it's actually pretty good. It gets better and it lasted a long time because I had it on my arm before I went to bed for like four or five hours and it was still going pretty good when I went to bed. It's not there anymore, but decent, decent fragrance. So let's see, where was I? Hit the like button. That's where we left off. I appreciate that. Lemon line. Oh, that's good stuff. Got sublime based off your recommendation. Love it. Thanks, my man. That is that's one of the best releases of the year. Latafa, they did they did a good thing putting that out. It's your most anticipated from the hall. I don't know if you're asking everybody else or me, but for me, the most anticipated was Mahir Legacy because I wanted that's why I started with it. I really wanted to see how much of Sedley it actually actually is, and I think it's 90%, if not better. I wouldn't call it exact 100% one-to-one -one carbon copy, but it's pretty damn close. It's a little spicier than Sedley. I like that. I love spice, but it is a little spicier than Sedley. Sedley's not quite as spicy as this. Mustache EDP. Have you heard of this one? I have a full review on it if you'd like to know some, some details of my full thoughts on it. I actually have a full review on it. Anytime you're curious about my thoughts on a fragrance in the search bar, you just got to type in TLTG in the name of the fragrance or TLTG in the name of the topic. And if I have a video on it, it'll come up because I have about 2,100 videos here on YouTube currently and counting. <laughs> Between shorts, live streams, and recorded videos, this year I've been averaging around 100 videos a month. That's right. I said 100 videos a month. Yeah, that's love making content, man. See how Sedley, see how the Sedley clone is before I buy the real stuff. Uh, I would say the real stuff's still better, but you could get by with this for sure. Just know that if you've sampled Sedley, that my immediate takeaway from this is it's very close, but this is spicier. It's not a pepper bomb, but it's peppery. 
it's definitely the green spice started off and the pepper started to settle in more. But I would say it's every bit of 90%. So, I mean, out in the air, probably can't tell the difference. Up close is where you got to really get the differences. But, I mean, it, I say it's a it's a safe move if you're looking for affordable Sedley. This is going to be – I haven't tried a, other Sedley clones. I've heard this is the one, and sh I'll be damned. It sure seems like it to me. It's great. <clears throat> it's amazing for summer. Didn't care for it at first. Quite generic, but amazing when it's hot. Let's see. Has a little more of a lime twist. I didn't get much lime. It had more of a lemon smell to me, which I attribute to the grapefruit. Really made me want to get it. Legacy's worth purchasing. Just bought the black edition. I know it has nothing to do with expecting great anybody. I haven't tried it. I haven't even looked into it. I know it exists. I've seen the bottle on online. Wearing Percival. That's a damn good one. Definitely worth a pickup. We'll get compliments. I believe that because Sedley's good at getting compliments. We're really thinking of picking up Aqua Sextius right now based on your views. I don't think it's a safe blind buy, but if you like Fig, then it's safe. You got to like Fig, though. This was the this was the highlight of the haul. See, this is altitude for you. See that? See that leaking on the frosted glass? That's the altitude. It's not the bottle's fault. It's there's pressure built up. So this is I got to do this stupid crap all the time. I hate to do it. My finger gets soaked. So I got to put it upside down to where the stem's got the little bit of air. Push and hold. And usually something's going to leak on my hand. That's not happening right now, thankfully. God, that smells good. Oh, so beautiful. But that's how I have to stop the leaking because pressure builds up. Because like any of you that live at altitude, you know, like bags of chips look like they're about to pop. Pringles cans. The seal inside the lid looks like it's about to pop. Pressure builds up at high altitude. So that's why I had this going on. It's just pushing fragrance out. So I got to release the pressure. And that's the way to do it. You have to flip it upside down to where there's air that push and hold and it bleeds it out. I know that was random, but disappointing to see when you open the box. God, I smell it in the air. This is so good. It's a salty fig. Strange, fruity, spicy, woodiness like this. This is such a unique fragrance. It's so good. I'm such a fan of that one. It wasn't the one I wore first, though. This was my second favorite in the video, but this is the more versatile, safer blind buy. Whew, I smell aqua sexiest, though. It's kind of engulfing the airspace. <clears throat> Trust me, you're preaching to the choir. I get a little bit more spice out of it than Sedley has. I debated on that. Yeah, I debated on grabbing it. They have it. Well, it's not an investment. <laughs> Fragrances aren't an investment. They're frivolous. They're a luxury. I mean, depends on how you store them and what you're buying. But should be. Should be fine. No damn reason to order them, but I ordered them. I saw your order. I was wondering who did that. You did it through the affiliate link, so I saw your entire order. Thank you for using the affiliate link, Sean. But I was like, man, somebody bought that entire range? I've never tried it. Am I missing out? That You had me questioning, like, should I get them? Are they so good that he bought all of them? Well, now I know who did that. Because I don't see names and stuff like that, but I see the orders and what was ordered. But, uh, yeah, man, I hope that. Definitely let me know what you think about them when you get them. They were cheap. Can go to my son if they're underwhelming. Hit that thumbs up. That's what I'm talking about. I've been getting the ones I want as they come out, basically. Like I was wanting to get this one for a little bit. It's a 2023 release. Like this is this year. This is another thing. Like the two that I wanted from this year was this and Body Out Oud Sublime, and they've both been great. Which we need to jump into another one. So another hype beast that I was encouraged to get. We're gonna start with the ones you guys encouraged me to get first. Kenzo Ohm and Tense. So we'll stay right here. <clears throat> We're pretty much caught up on the comments. We'll check this one out. So I have the Eau de Toilette, the new version. I have the Eau de Parfum, the new version. Now I'm gonna have the Intense. Now I need to get the Marine. <laughs> I have to say they're all good though. They've all been good. They all have a slightly different blue hue to the bottle. But you'd have to put them side by side because in pictures, it could be confusing because it I mean, this bottle looks like the EDP, like there's a slight teal hue to the Eau de Toilette. 
and so on. But I've had some of you guys tell me this one's the best one right after I get told the EDP is the best one. <laughs> and I, but I wanted to start with the Oda Parfum. God, such a good atomizer. That is salty. That is much more marine. Hmm. Smells really good out in the air. So it's an intense flanker on the Eau de Toilette, not the Eau de Parfum. What is that? Something, I'm trying to figure out how I want to articulate this. It's salty and marine, but there's something else going on here. Is that a certain type of wood? I can't figure out what that is. I, I'm trying to figure out the right words to describe what I'm smelling. It's very powerful, though. It's very strong. There's a little citric feel, but it's not overwhelmingly citric. It's an herbal. There's a little touch of bitterness. It's very marine. It's like a dark wood or something like that. Let's pull up the notes. I don't even want to screw around. I want to know what the hell this is because I can't figure out what it is. Little Toilette Intense from 2021. Fresh, aquatic, woody, synthetic green. So it still has the Calypso note from the Eau de Toilette. Pink pepper, fig wood. That's what that weird ass shit. And Akigala wood. Australian sandalwood, Haitian vetiver. So a lot of woodiness here. I guess the fig's the only thing that could provide the green feel, but I get that greenness to it. A little bit of a, that weird herbal feel, but it's it's more salty than than these notes would lead you to believe. What an odd use, because I get the pink pepper, but it's strange the way it's blended. This is super woody, but this fig wood note, I think, is what's making it strange, because it doesn't smell like a typical juicy fig, a soapy fig, anything like that. It's got this weird, like, jammy, woody quality to it. It's strange. It's good strange, though. That's what I think people like so much about these Kenzo Ohm fragrances is they don't smell like everything else. This does smell like an inherently more intensified woody version of the EDT, which is piney green, powdery, and much more fresh than this. This is very much intensified. It's named appropriately. And then you have the Eau de Parfum, which is a leather aquatic, which is unique all in itself. Um, I think that's why these get so much love is they're they're not run of the mill blues, but they're clearly blue fragrances, not just by the color association with the bottles. They fit the versatility and mass appeal, but they're ultra also much more interesting than everything else in its category of blue fragrances. These are some of the most interesting blue fragrances I've smelled. I don't know which one to crown is my favorite because I'm still torn between the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette because I really like the Eau de Toilette just as much as I like the EDP. They're all three good. And they're not so redundant that you can't have all three. If you like the DNA, you can enjoy all three of these. I'm very curious to try the Marine Flanker now because so far we're three for three. This is a great fragrance too. This is super woody. This would be a great everyday. Fr I think this is the best of the three that I have, the EDT, the EDP, and now the EDT Intense. This is the best one for just everyday. Everyday wear, work with everything, has a little bit of freshness, but a lot of woods. I, I really like this one a lot. This might be the best of the three. Maybe it's because I'm in the moment with it. It's great. It is great. It dwarfed Mahir Legacy being so good because that's super good, too. So far, we're two for two. This has been great. Now, look, these are recommendations from you guys. You know, if enough people recommend something to me, I typically is like, okay, I'm, I need to try this. And that's what's going on here. So where was I? Okay, here's here's where I was. Here. Um. 
I would say Nishan A. Nishan A is a more interesting house overall. You have more mass appealing stuff as a whole from Parfums de Marley, but the ones you'll enjoy more for your money, I think, are going to come from Nishan A. There's so much to enjoy from your freshie, just one of the best freshies ever that performs Wulong Cha, one of the better evening vanillas in Ani. If you like oak moss, you'll love Hachibat. Um, there's just so much good, a unique, boozy, dark fragrance in Fan Your Flames. B612, great everyday green woody fragrance. The list goes on and on. There's a lot of good stuff. I would say Nishane. I'm a fan of both houses, but I would say Nishane. Yeah, I, I'm ready to get away from the altitude. <clears throat> I have not. I definitely have not. In Florida three times, it couldn't be more flat. Oh, yeah, I've been to Florida many, many times. Where I'm moving, we used to vacation every summer in my childhood, all the way to my, like, mid-teens. Somebody told me there's a Middle Eastern Nautica Voyage dupe. Why? I'd, I'd be down to try it. <laughs> I'd definitely be down to try it. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. It is a phenomenal summer fragrance. I don't have many from the house other than Sidrap Waze and Oud Lemon Mint. It's a phenomenal choice. I don't know if you watch a quality fragrances. We were on there talking Mancera's last night in his live stream. Um, that's I, He sold me on it, and I've been a big advocate for it since I got it last year. It gives me the vibe of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue while not smelling like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, if that makes sense. It's very bright, airy, citric, watery. Uh, it's a clean fragrance. It's not going to overwhelm you with strength, but it doesn't go away. It stays with you for a long time. It's a really, it's one of my top three uh, when it comes to fresh fragrances from the house. Top five overall from the house too. Still prefer the EDP. That's fair. No one, no one will fill your room. Almond Tense is the best one. I could see, I could see an argument for this. Almond Tense is definitely really good. Trying to find the name of it. it. Smells a bit like Fusion Dissy. Ah, uh, I don't know about all that. I have that right here. We smelled it last night. This smells more like sunscreen to me. The coconut water is very sunscreen esque. Like the way I described it last night is feet in the sand, feeling the breeze, walking out to the water. Sun kissed, sweaty skin with sunscreen on it. Like that whole beach vibe. That's Fusion Dissy for me. And uh, by the way, the the haul I did, the ones I bought for the sale last night, I bought the extreme of this, speaking of. So there's all the stuff from the haul video is still right here. That's fair. That's fair. And I think because the EDP is so, it's so weird just to even say Leather Aquatic. <laughs> yes. You okay? uh, yeah, I'm live. Um, I'm currently live. People are watching me talk to you on the live stream right now. They can't hear you. <laughs> Why? Anything? Everything good? All right. Bye. That was George. <laughs> so herbaceous. Yeah. People crack up when I say that for some reason. More distinctive, but solely is great. Safe. It's definitely a safe blind buy. I think anyways. Very nostalgic, and uh, we're talking fragrances right now, Bane. Please save the thought-provoking question that has nothing to do with fragrance for the end, sir. I don't know if I would say underrated at this point. They get a, they've been getting a lot of love. Really has the Kenzo Ohm range and is as a whole has been getting some love. What's going on, Rick? Very unique, almost like a bamboo smell. That's fair. It's just so woody, but still has a freshness to it. I think that. I'll say again, that fig wood smell, I think, is what makes it have that little twinge of uniqueness that kind of separates it from all the other woody fragrances that have some freshness. Like, this is a woody fragrance with some freshness. They smell nothing alike, though. That's a great thing. But, yeah, this is good. This is really good. I'm very torn if, that, if, if it's that one or the EDP is the better of the two. That's fair. I can see where this, yeah, this is intense is a good name for this because it is a dense smell for sure. Never tried it. Good to see you catch my whiff. Real Chuck Taylor, my here legacy was my sin of the day for almost a week last month. You were really digging it. Odd question. Do you wash your hats? Uh, it depends because I try not to sweat in my hat. So it's, 
it's not that often that I wash them, but I do have the little hat thing you put. Yeah, I got one for flat bills and one for curve bills in the event I need to wash a hat. And then I just put it in a uh, delicate cycle, cool water uh, in the washing machine. And then I do uh, low heat for like 20 minutes in the dryer to get the majority of the dampness away. And then I let it air dry the rest of the way because some some hats are cotton and I don't want them to shrink. Most of the hats are polyester that I have or acrylic mixed with a little bit of cotton but they can shrink except for the polyester ones. Those are hard to shrink intense heat to shrink polyester. <clears throat> uh, definitely Versace pour Homme. to me. That's the king of the office fragrances. I know it Prada Lone was dubbed that and it's great for the office, but I think the more inoffensive, more easy to wear and versatile would be Versace signature Versace pour Homme. It's called both. Uh, but that's what I would say. So I've got to skip a little bit. FYI, we could hear George. So if you pick up the phone on live again, be careful. LOL. Well, that's funny if you could hear him. <laughs> Salute Ross in chat. Bulgari poor Ohm Extreme. Oh, don't you go calling people names while you're looking in the mirror, Bane. Come on now. Better for sold out now. I'm going to absolutely detail. Lee. How does Leighton perform? Fantastic for me. Very fantastic for me. I haven't tried it yet. I will get it at some point, though. Good tip, Snakey. You put cool water in the washing machine. Does it break the bottle? Uh, I don't mean cool water as in cool water, the fragrance. Cool temperature is what I meant. So let's move into, I guess, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. Another 2023 release. 50 ml. We'll see. Supposedly like vanilla and incense and stuff like that. Definitely not a summer scent profile based on what I've seen. But then again, who knows? I haven't smelled it yet, but here we go. Definitely one of the 10 better designer releases from last year. was a, Or was it 2021? I don't remember. It was either 21 or 22 for the EDT. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Did I just spend 89 bucks on something I'm never going to wear? That's a real possibility, but hey, that could be said for a ton of fragrances, right? So let's see. Big spray. Just out in the air when I smell that, it smells like vanilla ice cream. That was the immediate thing I got. It smells like vanilla bean ice cream. I can't get away from that. It smells like vanilla bean ice cream to me. I'm sure if for some of you that have smelled this, maybe you agree, maybe you don't. I get vanilla bean ice cream. Very cool, cooling type of smell. Wasn't expecting that at all. I get a little bit of incense. I get a woodiness, like it, it dries out the fragrance a little bit type of woody feel. I, so nothing ocean <laughs> about this, but it smells great. Honestly, I think it smells a little better than the Eau de Toilette, but it also doesn't smell all that much, at least in the opening, like the Eau de Toilette. A little bit, like I get a little bit of caramel. I'm sure, I bet you caramel still in the notes. I don't remember, but I want to say it is because I get a little bit of caramel. That vanilla bean ice cream is toning down, but still there. It's kind of an ice cream type of vanilla. This is not a summer fragrance. I just want to make sure to say that for being named Ocean. I don't think I would wear this outdoors in the summer heat, but let's take a look at the notes. Here we go. So it was a 2021 release, the previous one. Sweet. No shit. Synthetic, fresh, powdery. And spicy. Yeah, I get some powder already. Grapefruit, frankincense, vanilla, amber, extreme. Eh, there's definitely some woodiness here, though. It doesn't list woody, but I get a little bit of a woody feel. What, what just happened? I highlighted that and it pulled all of this up. Okay, so I just learned something about Parfumo. It's got this vanilla bean ice cream with a little bit of a caramel swirl. 
kind of thing going on, a light caramel swirl. Picture that kind of ice cream. If vanilla bean had, you could get vanilla bean with caramel swirl. That's what I get from this. It is, it's getting more and more powdery. This is nothing to do with the ocean. This has nothing to do with summertime. What a terribly named fragrance that smells really good. I, I'm going to put this in the category of something like Polo Red Parfum, where it smells really good, but boy, did they name it wrong. It, doesn't, it smells nothing like Polo Red. Absinthe and Iris and stuff, nothing like Polo Red, but it smells awesome. It's such a good release in the wrong bottle. Same here. This is a really good release. This is better than Eau de Toilette, I think, but it doesn't smell anything like the name. Ocean. How can you call something like this Ocean? Damn, it smells good, though. It's a powdery vanilla now. That cooling tone's not gone, but it's fading. I really like it. It's a nice change-up. It's definitely a nice change-up. You're right, Bane. That is true. It was also a quick and easy question, whereas you want me to think about something <laughs> for a bit. You have to remember that. Uh, it depends. So it's not modern. It's timeless, in my opinion. I, it's very nostalgic for me. It used to be my school dance fragrance when I was a kid. But I would say it's worth getting out to a department store to try it on your skin and see if you like it. It's very dry, green tobacco. Uh, smells of success is how I've always associated it. Green and gold, money, you know. I've always liked it. I know, only kidding. Oh, that's all good. I don't know which fragrance you're talking about. Just got it myself, and I love it. Love Ocean EP. Some say it smells really good. It smells really good. It just has nothing to do with the ocean. There's nothing blue about this fragrance, nothing oceanic about it. OG dis didn't disappoint me. I do like this one better, though. I thought the OG was a good release, not a great release. I thought it was a very good release, not a great release. I think it's the better way to say it. Oh, wow. Totally different scent profiles. I would easily pick La Mala Parfum, though. Uh, yeah, because I love Iris. Yeah, I'm with Kenneth here. Yeah, for sure. I'm using good stock, but why doesn't it project? How can I make it project more? That's a skin chemistry thing. That's just what it is on your skin. And you're not going to make a fragrance project more on your skin. Should have been called something else. Totally agree. It smells great. It smells great. It's very powdery. You got to like powdery. You definitely have to like powdery fragrances to enjoy this one. It smells like smoky vanilla to me. That's fair. Because I do get a little incense. It's, it's not a bomb. Like typically incense will really shine on my skin. I think the percentage is a little low or maybe it's the particular frankincense oil used. It's not really just popping off of my skin. Like I smell it, but it's not overtaking it to where I would call it as, as smoky as maybe it is for you, Bane. Uh, but I totally get where you're coming from. What deodorant do you rock on that? So I wear um, Degree Cool Rush. Just been wearing it since I was a teenager. That's what I go with. T uh, degree Cool Rush. I buy the two packs. Has on shampoo. Picked up a bottle of Ralph's Club at Marshall's last week. A surprising spring scent. Gives a bit spicy. Seems to have a bit of incense. It's fresh at the same time off my skin. It's very versatile. The parfum is superior, though. If you ever get a chance to smell the parfum, it's got a little bit more of a darkness and spicy tone to it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. After an hour, it calms down greatly. The louder fragrance is the Eau de Parfum, um, the original, but it's also the fresher one. It's more mass appealing, blue fragrance, right? Uh, where the parfum, it's more interesting. It, it is more It's got more going on while still maintaining the original scent profile. It's clean, but doesn't take over my scent of the day. That's fair. I use Cremo body wash. They have some bangers. I've been through a lot of their body washes. It used to choke me out as a kid because it was so green and dusty smelling. Now I would probably rock that scent. I need a bottle now. It's, it's really good. I only wear it in cooler weather. That's a lot of people's favorite. That one's a little powdery, too. That, that, that Angelica gives that Play-Doh smell at the top. It's odd, but I like it. I think so. You're not going to find it at discounters. I bought it at Sephora long years ago. Yeah, it's it's worth it. I think so. Definitely try it before you buy. It's expensive for a blue. But, I mean, that's regular price for designers now. 
the mid 100s range for 100 ml that's what they're going for now so uh, same feeling they fall in the same realm for sure smoky vanilla uh this one's not all that ambery it's a little bit i would say you get more amber accord out of but you also have ambroxan freshening up mercedes-benz club black that's fresher than this not as powdery as this either um i would say there is some redundancy though i think fruity seduction that's a great version of lost cherry in my opinion ocean edp has similarities to lunarosa extreme i've never tried that one never never tried it i hope you enjoy that that's my favorite from the house the one edp is timeless sir ambery sweet tobacco never a bad evening to wear that geared for the evenings for sure Abrazio Absolute. What's the scent like? Performance is crazy. Performance is crazy. It's super strong. Um, it smells since do you have profumo? I love the parfum. So imagine dropping some of the the rosemary and the incense from the parfum. Add some fruitiness. Enhance the patchouli. And you have absolute absolute the easiest way to explain it is if you've ever smelled profumo which is much more smoky and patchouli heavy than the parfum if you take the incense out and add fruity notes you have absolute take the darkness out and add some bright fruits you have it so it's fruity it's aquatic a little bit of the invictus aqua feel people related to invictus aqua i get it with this patchouli note that kind of shines through and still has the aqua de Joe dna it's very good very underrated and it's strong it is strong. That's the one in the line that I've gotten the most compliments with over the years. That's the one I have a 200 ml backup bottle of that one day I will get to. Closest so far. I'm going I'm to try it eventually. Rotation deodorants. Okay, so on that note, we're going to leave it at that one and move on to the next one. So we're going to go with Artisan 20 or Artisan XX, however you want to call it been wanting to get this i got artisan teal recently haven't done any full wearings yet i'm thinking this week i must put it into the rotation but i've been interested to see this bottle in person i like it because it looks as simple as they took artisan pure and spray painted it <laughs> that's what it looks like right artisan pure plus spray paint go ahead and have our little ASMR moment. Of course, now that's going to stick to my finger. It's heavy. Ooh, Cap's got some heft. Got some weight to it for what it is. Let's give it a spray. One good spray should be all we need. Does not click into place, but holds pretty well for the most part. Let's see what we're working with. So the Artisan line is my favorite line from John Barbados. It's still got that citric green freshness to it. I don't remember the notes, but I immediately get a bit of kind of all of them except the original because the original is all about like orange, clementine, and white florals. I get more artisan aqua, artisan blue, and artisan pure from this. It ties closer to those, the citrus and the greens. Very much so. Very green, uh, but fresh green, pettigrain, tarragon, those types of greens. I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe lemongrass. It's kind of like if you have one of them, you don't need any other ones. Like, I feel like this is very similar to Artisan Pure. A little bit spicier than Artisan Pure, though. I I'll give it that. I'm not knocking it. I'm just, it's so easy to compare it to the others. 2020 release. Woody green, fresh, earthy, and synthetic. Bergamot bitter orange, absinthe wormwood, geranium, Napolese Sichuan pepper, vetiver musk, and cedar wood. So that's why it's spicier. It's got the Sichuan pepper, which is typically a fleeting spice most of the time. Not always the case, but most of the time it comes and goes fiery hot and then it fades definitely green a uh, little bit of a bitterness to it so seeing bitter orange isn't surprising a little bit of a bitterness to it um, but very green very very green 
I'm surprised there's not more greens in here. Cause like I said, I was thinking tarragon and, and maybe lemongrass or some kind of grassy green smell, maybe even rosemary because it's spicy and green, pedigrain, something like that. Apparently not, but it's very green. When you see the note breakdown versus what you smell, it, it like for me, it's surprising. I figured more green notes would be in here. And apparently that's the second strongest accord. So it's not like I'm, I'm smelling something that's not there. It's just whatever it is is not listed because I doubt bergamot and absinthe wormwood are just making this thing super green, <laughs> you know? It's solid. It's not special, and it's very redundant if you have other artisan flankers. Not artisan, artisan flankers. Because the only artisan flanker I haven't tried is artisan black. That one's hard to get. That's the only one I haven't gotten. I have all the rest of the artisan flankers. Artisan, artisan aqua, artisan blue, artisan pure, artisan teal, and now this. I believe that's all of them minus black. This is nice, easy going, spicy green, still very, very fresh. Woody, but not too woody. I don't think it's special, though. I do like artisan teal a little bit more. I do like that one a bit more. Sin of the day, ironically, a similar... To Hawass or MB Spirit, great scent. Lunarosa Blacks, one of the only powdery smells I like. I think the powdery amber is addicting it. That's fair. That is very fair, sir. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. I'm a big fan of it. I mean, that's it's my most worn version of Aqua de Joe. It's the one I've worn the most over the years. It's got the biggest dent in the bottle of all of them. Incense resinous tone, but the vanilla is very clean. Clean vanilla. That does make sense. It also has distinct spiciness. It's different. Not boring at all. Summer evening smells great. I would see evenings. I'm, I'm sure we're still talking about this comments talking about Luna Rosa EDP. I think that's fair. If that's what we're talking about here, I agree. I agree with that. Because there still is a freshness to it. So I'm with you on that. Because like I was saying, it had that cooling ice cream smell to it at the top. It's still, it's still fresh. It hasn't faded. Rocking Coach Green today, getting a little hooping in. I'm, I'm assuming you meant hooping instead of hopping. John Barbados looks like something Michael Jackson would have in his bathroom. <laughs> One of the best artisans. Hard to get. Oh, yeah, I've been wanting spicy leather. I've been keeping my eye out for it at a few places. It's great. Easy to wear leather with spices, just like it says, will be great for fall and winter. Because, look, I got to tell you, um, bright leather, oh, man, that is so good. And it's named appropriately. It's a soft, bright like a beige leather kind of smell. It's so good. I, intense leather is like the worst one, and intense leather is a good fragrance. But after smelling bright leather, bright leather is better, and I've heard so many ravingly wonderful things about spicy leather. I will get that at some point. I haven't smelled Givenchy pie since I was a kid. I don't even remember what it smells like. Pass that bottle around the room. Yeah, there you go. New member, Detroit native. Three one third, so three one three. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see what level you jumped on. All star level. Well, welcome. You'll be eligible for the designer tier giveaway, which is three spins this month. Uh, I will be putting out the poll for which fragrance I should buy. Um, I'm gonna give you guys five options. Last month it was Tom Ford Costa Azura Eau de Parfum 50 ml. Then second spin was uh, Rubroca Theorem. Third spin was a mystery box full of clone fragrances, about 50 bottles. Uh, small bottles, 17 ml to 50 ml. So we had three spins. So you'll be eligible for three spins this month, which a third spin will be another mystery box just like that. Uh, haven't decided what the first, the second spin is going to be because the second spin, I just picked something. But the first spin, the main prize, I'll let you guys vote on. I'll give you five options and whatever gets the most votes, that's what I buy. So I'll be doing that this week. And then there's a members only live stream where we do the live spin. But uh, welcome to the family. Thank you so much, my man. Don't forget that you'll see people using these, these custom emojis here in just a moment. They tend to do that when somebody signs up in the live chat. On a side note, thank you for recommending Vertus Vanilla Oud. I love it. It makes me wish for a cold California night. It's terrible for the warm weather, I'm sure. But, man, is that one of the best fragrances I've ever put my nose on. It's so good. Glad you're enjoying it, Spencer. 
Your mom, 85. Got to love the name. Enjoying your videos since the beginning. You should pick up black gold for the fall. I feel you would like it. I, that's been in and out my card a bunch of times. Right now, it's on my radar. I've had midnight gold on my radar for a little bit, and then EQ kind of sold me on it further last night. He put pink prestigium on my radar. Black gold and wild fruits have been on my radar for a bit. I'm always buying fragrances, man. Always, always, always. Artisan indigo. That's one I don't have. That's one I don't have. Is that an artisan flanker? It is not. John Barbados XX Indigo. It's not an artisan flanker. I wanted to make sure because I was like, man, I could have swore that wasn't an artisan flanker. There you go. It's just the regular XX line because I don't have John Barbados XX either or 20. The heritage one. I don't have that one either. So not an artisan flanker. <laughs> Since the days, cocktails and catamarans. Thank you for turning me on to this fragrance. Man, that's one of the best. That's a vacation in a bottle with real power. That can choke you out, that fragrance. Hooping and hopping. There you go. I'm going back on me. I'm in a quandary over. <laughs> Desperately want to buy it, but need to watch my bank balance. Right? How It's very unique. It's oddly creamy, fresh, powdery. Like I said, it's something about that tobacco blossom note that really gives it its unique character. It's such a good fragrance that does not get... It's been around for a long time now. 09 release? Maybe even sooner. Maybe like 05. It's been around a long time. It's such a good fragrance. All right. Got to skip ahead just a little bit. There we go. Spencer's using some of the emojis. Black Prestigiums. Yeah, I've heard it's a great iris leather. I've debated on getting that one. Yeah, yeah. He, he called me after the fact. He, he called me. He's going to be... He talked to the dude after, the, after everything. And they sorted all that out. So, yeah, he pulled it down. Guava is the main note for sure. And, yeah, Niles perfumed that himself, too. He did a great job for that being his first outing. He did great. This fragrance looks like a very successful fragrance haul. And we got one more. And this was the one I wanted the absolute most out of everything that I got from Aqua de Parma recently. is Chinoto di Liguria. I saw a review from Chad from A Gentleman's Journey a few years ago. And I was like, ooh, I bet I would like that. And then when I was traveling abroad, they had an Aqua de Parma section at one of the uh, duty frees, and I tried a bunch of them, and this was my favorite. Um, it's a very spicy green citrus fragrance. I know what it smells like. This is not a first impression. That's why I saved it for last. Big five-ounce bottle with the cap tester, like 56, 65. It's one of those two for this bottle. Yeah, they're separate. They're separate. <clears throat> so I am... Quite excited to have this. We are going to go ahead and give it a spray. Why the hell not? Atomizer's lined up. That's always nice. I haven't smelled it since February. February was the first time I smelled it. Oh, mouth watering. This Chinoto note in fragrance is very unique. It doesn't smell like other citruses. It's got a bitter, like acidic quality to it. There's a little touch of powder. There's a piney green feel to this. Spicy, but still breezy and fresh. You want to talk about underrated fragrances. Who talks about this? I mean, seriously. Oh, God. For being so crazy fresh and bright... There is class to this scent profile. It can be as casual as you want it to be. Don't get what I'm saying twisted and incorrect. But I feel like in the summertime, this is one of those daytime fragrances that can dress up for you. This one will do the job. It's not loaded with synthetics. Very photorealistic, natural smell to it. Has a little bit of a fougerish feel in the scent profile. It's kind of, I think that dominance in greens is what does it. Let's uh let's pull up the notes. God, it's such a beautiful fragrance. There it is. 2018 release. Decent rating. Citrus, fresh, floral, spicy, and fruity. Ginotto, mandarin orange, jasmine, rosemary, cardamom, geranium, musk, and patchouli. So you get a lot of rosemary and cardamom here. A lot of it. With some musk. 
this musk adds a little bit of a fuzzy quality to it. Some of you know what I mean when I refer to a fuzzy, musky smell. Um, almost like nose tickling <laughs> in some ways. It's, it's kind of hard to really articulate what I mean by what I'm smelling. This is so good. This is going to remind you of fragrances in the same vein of like Dior's Eau Sauvage, uh, Scandal Parfum Cologne from Raja Parfums. Fragrances like that. Fiero from Zerzhov. Though it falls into that vein. Those citrus aromatics that have a strong aromatic fougere character to the profile, that's what you're going to get here. It smells like it fits in the family with those. But the Chinotto here adds a little bit different acidic feel to the top. Like I said, it comes across very acidic to me. But I just love it. I just love it. It's such a good release. I'm so glad I have a bottle now. So when I was buying those Aqua de Parma fragrances not long ago, this was out of stock. Because it was the main one I wanted to get, and it was out of stock. I was frustrated. And I could have got it other places, but I try to I try to shop in just a few places. I don't like just going everywhere all the time. Um, and they got it back in stock at Fragrance Buy, and I was already buying some stuff. So I was like, yep, definitely grabbing that. So let's give them all some ratings real quick. We're about to hit the one-hour mark. So let's revisit. Let's start at the top with Mahir Legacy. It's had a little time to dry down. Opening was great. I find it's a little more spicy than Sedley, but pretty close overall. And Broxen's coming through a little bit more. Very soft, woody feel. That's got to be that cashmere note. Just easy going. So easy to like. I think this is a great fragrance. This is an 8 out of 10 in my first impressions. With room to grow with the overall grade from a full review. Got to spend time with it, wearing experiences, all the good stuff. Take it through the motions. But I feel like there's potential for that 8 out of 10 to increase further. They did a really good job with this. This is the second most impressive Latafa that I've smelled this year behind Sublime. I think it's a great move. It was a great fragrance. Kenzo... Ohm Eau de Toilette Intense. That intensity has calmed down already. Very woodsy. You got to like woody fragrances. It's lost its interest. It's intrigue. It's not as intriguing as the Eau de Parfum anymore. The opening is, as it starts to settle, lightly aquatic, very woody. Starting to get more generic, basically. But not too generic. I don't think it's basic. I do think it's very good. We're going to go ahead and stick with a 7.5 out of 10 for this one. It's still very good, but it calmed down and lost some of the intrigue. Not all of it, but it lost some of it. But it's such an easygoing fragrance. Super versatile. Super versatile. Like I said, it lost its intensity. It's not powdery and piney green like the Eau de Toilette. Um, it still has that intensified feel from the original, but not so much. Not as much as it had. 7.5 out of 10. Still really good rating. Then next was Prada Lunarosa Ocean Eau de Parfum. That incense is coming out more. It's more of a smoky vanilla now that it's calmed down. So totally get where you're coming from, Bane. It's becoming smoky vanilla more and more. I still feel like there's a woody note that's not being accounted for somewhere in here. I don't get much of this. It's like an amber extreme or something like that. I don't get much of an ambery feel here. But I think this is a great evening scent across the board. I don't think this is all that much of a daytime scent, maybe in the cold weather. But evenings, I think this is really good. It's kind of a, a fun evening fragrance that's not super juvenile, but still can kind of fit like the fun night out video, this would have worked in there, I think. A um, little bit of a gourmand feel, playful, still has some freshness while being sweet and powdery. Uh, I think it's great. I think this is an 8 out of 10 in first impressions for sure. That's some good stuff. I'm really liking it. Artisan 20. If you like Artisan Pure and Artisan Aqua and, and so on, you're going to like this. You're going to like it, um, but I don't think it's better than Artisan Pure and Artisan Blue. I think it falls in line more with Artisan Aqua, like I'm ranking them basically, where it's still a very good fragrance, but I don't put it quite 
on the pedestal that I have Artisan Blue because a lot of you know that's my favorite green springtime fragrance is Artisan Blue. You know, it's called blue. It's very green. I think this is a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, still a very good release. Maybe not as good as some of the others in the line, but still just it's it's right there. Like maybe a tick below Artisan Pure and Artisan Blue. I would still put this above Artisan Aqua and Artisan. Absolutely. So, yeah, 7 out of 10 for Artisan 20. And then Chinoto di Liguria. In some ways, the main event, because this is the only one I had smelled prior that I've been wanting to get. Big fan. Big, big fan. I think this is a great fragrance at an 8 out of 10. Now, I, I don't think it's better than Colonia Pura. Pura, Pura, however you want to say it. That's still my favorite Aqua de Parma fragrance. But this is up there. I put this over Fico di Amalfi. Yes, I said it. I put this over Bergamotto di Calabria. Yes, I said it. I like all these fragrances. That's why I bought them. But this one, this one's more my taste than all of the rest besides Colonia Pura. So an 8 out of 10. Pretty successful haul, I have to say. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy with everything. Everything in this video. Alpha Charlie, good to see you. Dark Rebel Rider has one of the most appropriate bottles. Yes, it does. For the scent in my collection. Black leather jacket and a black leather jacket bottle. Yeah, no, I totally get it. I Am King is legit. Just got it in. It smells so good. It's such a good fruity fragrance. I am having a great weekend, Nick. Good to see you. 724. I wore it the other night and leans feminine on my skin. Smell generic. Okay, 10-4. Women, great opening. Black Prestigium. Totally beast mode. I bet it is. Skip ahead a little bit. Eric, what's going on, my man? Late to the chat. Just got my notification. DM'd you with a question. Polo. Center of the day is Ralph's Club Eau de Parfum. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I'll get back to you after the live stream. <clears throat> good choice. Point taken. Okay. I thought you had over 300. Now it's over 400. Did it grow? <laughs> okay, you guys are having your own conversation here. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate that. All genres. Bot yeah, see? You gained 100 bottles in like one minute. It's crazy. <laughs> Last question. Is a Cento worth picking up? So you have to like florals and musk. The hyacinth and iris dominate this fragrance. Uh, the color of the bottle is very fitting. It has this purple flower feel because it's dominated by two purple flowers. Uh, so it's very appropriate. The pineapple does add some fruitiness, but it's a very clean, musky fragrance. This stuff, it's strong first and foremost, but it's very dressy. I don't find it to be all that casual of a fragrance. When I used to sell cars, I used to wear that one. That was one of my favorite suit and tie fragrances. Uh, that was when I was at Toyota for the few months. I went and tried that, tried that dealer. I, I didn't like the volume dealer. That wasn't the place for me. I had been came from luxury, went there for a little bit, like eh, and went back to luxury. So uh, point being, I had a new car manager that wore Aventus every day. And hit the batch he had was strong. So I was like, all right. I'm going to wear something strong tomorrow. And we just going in the sales meeting, we just going to have a, a aroma battle. And he smelled me and we talked about it. It was hilarious. I have a very specific memory of wearing that fragrance. Point being, if you wear Oxford and above on a regular basis, it's probably a good addition to your wardrobe. Or even if it's not a regular basis, but it happens a decent amount through it. Let's say throughout the year, you, you have, let's say throughout the month, you're going to dress Oxford or better at least you know, 10 to a dozen times, that's probably a good fragrance to have in your wardrobe. You got to like iris and hyacinth, though, this flowery smell. Powdery, musky, fruity. Easiest way for me to put it. And we're a little over an hour, just about that time to shut it down, guys. I appreciate you coming hang out with me for a little bit. Uh, we almost got to 100 likes. We got 91 likes where we're at right now. Hey, that's what's up. Make sure to watch the shorts video. I put it out like roughly an hour before this. <sighs> 100. Wow. Yeah, there you go. No, not yet. Not yet. I saw the prices on them. I was like, eh, I'm going to hold off. <laughs> I don't need them right now. There's other designers I'd rather grab right now. The Scent Magnetic. Oh, God. That's one of the best releases. That's one of the three best releases of the year. That's up there with Lamal Elixir for me. I have a decant. I really want a bottle. I really want a bottle. I haven't gotten around to it. The brand absolute note that they use, it's, it's a strange fragrance. It's warm. It's rich. It is the best 
boss the scent fragrance. I think it's amazing. Performance is great too. It's really good. Best fresh scent of all time. Uh, it's hard to just pick one. For me, I just got to go with what's the best for me. Maybe not the best for everyone, but Invictus Aqua 2018 is my favorite fragrance. And it's in super, super fresh. So I got to go with that. It's still my favorite fragrance. You know? uh, they're somewhat organized on the shelves right now, but it's gotten to where I have more fragrances than I have shelf space at this point. So it's kind of a clusterfuck in some spots. Uh, but that's all going to change with the new room I'm, I'm gonna, when we're moving in a month, which 29 days and counting. Um, much larger room, totally different shelving setup, buying some new shelves. So it'll be categorized differently. I'm going to do a, a room tour slash fragrance collection video as promised. It'll be a few weeks after I move once everything's set up. But uh, yeah, planning on doing that. Realtor in Florida, so I think it'll pick. Yeah, it's not. It, it'll work in Florida's heat. <clears throat> it will. It's because it's pretty fresh. It's strong, but it's fresh. Like I said, it's dominated by a clean musk, bright, powdery, fresh florals, and, and pineapple. And when I say pineapple, don't think of Ventus. Nothing like a Ventus. Um, it's very good, though. I don't know. I don't know. There's a real chance. Never tried Alferis. I don't know. But on that note, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. I appreciate all of you. Make sure to hit that thumbs up before you go. I'd love to see this hit a hundred likes before I close the window. That would be wonderful. Uh, if you haven't checked out yesterday evening's haul video or today's shorts video, please check that out if you want to. If you have a little bit of time to spare, thank you all for being here. Welcome to the new member. And uh, be on the lookout for tomorrow's weekly rotation video. Catch you guys on the next one. Have a happy Saturday.